Hello, my name is uh, Abdul Karim Alias from University of Science of Malaysia. And in this presentation, I would like to share a topic, uh, engaging minds in the classroom. So this presentation is actually about learning. Because at the end of the day, one of our challenges as a teacher or, or as an educator is to get learning happens in the classroom and outside the classroom. So in this presentation, I would like to discuss some of the common challenges that educators face um, in the classroom in terms of engaging students to achieve effective learning. So I would like to begin uh, to share with, uh, sharing with you um, this uh, story about uh, teachers. Uh, this actually um, a husband and wife, they are teachers. Um, they actually um, went for a vacation in Las Vegas. So they spent some time in the casino. And what they observe is actually um, in the casino, people are actually very um, busy and uh, very excited and they play uh, a lot of games in the casino and the the environment in the casino is in is uh, is, is, is uh, in such a way that uh, everyone is so engrossed in their activities so when they uh, when they went back to their uh, place they wrote an article in the blog and they asked a question in the article, can teachers create an exciting and unforgettable learning experience, just like the customer's experience in the casino? So I guess this is actually a challenge for all of us, the educators, to create an engaging and unforgettable uh, learning experience. So if we actually really think about what actually um, the factors that can um, influence the students to engage in the learning process, it is all about motivation. So I would like to share with you in the rest of this presentation how to really motivate our students and how to engage them uh, in, the, in the classroom um, and, out, and also outside the classroom. Okay, um, Eric Jensen, one of the uh, prominent uh, and uh, ed educational psychologists, he said this, there is no such thing as an unmotivated student, but there are, however, students in unmotivated states. So the challenge is for teachers and educators out there, if you are teaching a subject, any subject, especially if you are teaching a subject like this, mathematics or physics, a very dry subject. So how do we make this course exciting, interesting, engaging, fun, and the bottom line, at the end of the day, the learning happens. So we want to make uh, all the activities that we do uh, in a way that can engage the students and we can achieve effective learning. As Albert Einstein said, he said, it is the supreme art of the teacher to awaken joy in creative expression and knowledge. But then, when we look at our uh, practices, you know, in most of the classroom uh, nowadays, teachers always want their students to achieve higher level of learning, but they continue to use a form of teaching that is not effective at promoting such learning. And as John Dewey, also a famous um, educationist, he said, if we teach students, today's students as we thought, yesterday's, we rob them of tomorrow. And um, this is actually uh, Walter Lewin, Professor Walter Lewin from uh, uh, MIT. He wrote a book, For the Love of Physics. He's one of the icon of MIT. And, um, you can see on, on YouTube how he actually engaged students in the classroom. But basically, we can identify a few factors which made him one of the star of MIT and one of the best teachers at MIT. You can see that Walter Lewin is very energetic, always very energetic, and you can see the enthusiasm. So he's very enthusiastic, inspiring, exciting, thought-provoking, and the course that he delivered in the classroom, all the demonstration is very well designed. 
This is one example of what I myself do in the classroom. I use a lot of demonstration because the nature of the subject requires that the students really perform and do on their own demonstration so that we can illustrate the concept and the principles clearly, clearly when the students do the activity in the classroom with our guidance. So the essence of this presentation is about engaging minds, to engage the students in the learning process. And I would like to suggest that in order to engage the students in the classroom, we as the teachers have to be creative in terms of designing the learning in the classroom itself. So engaging minds, which is the title of this presentation, is about the, um, you know, the engaging minds, the key to engaging minds in the classroom is the role of teachers to creatively design meaningful and relevant learning activities that engage students to think, work together in group to accomplish certain tasks and get them to express their thought. So we have to look at uh, the learning in this 21st century in a new light, in a new picture. So the new culture of learning really is, uh, is, is really necessary for us to redefine, redefine pedagogy. And this will demand new skills, new paradigm, and new dimension. And will require fundamental redesign of the learning process and the learning structures that enable it. So the idea of engaging students would not be realized if you are doing the same thing just like you know the, the, the traditional classroom teacher-centered approach. So I would like to suggest that all teachers to embrace new role as a learning designer, not just as a mere teacher. And I would like also to propose that we take a role of, you know, the teacher take a role as a co-learner, which means that we co we co-create knowledge together in the classroom. And again, I would like to share a quote from Larry Spence. He said, we won't need the needs for more and better higher education until professors become designers of learning experiences and not just teachers. And this is a video that I would like to share. Uh, the activity that I do in the classroom with my students, as you can see here, I give them a simple task and um, uh, I group the students into a few groups and they have to complete the task in a, in a given uh, time. So let's just uh, watch this video, uh, it's less than uh, two minutes. Okay, I just skip uh, this video, but uh, just to give you some ideas of um, how can we engage the students in the classroom by uh, design by designing uh, some activities that uh, would get them to do uh, and also to think. And each of the activities is designed in such a way to achieve at least you know one learning outcome uh, for that particular topic. And after the activity. I ask the student actually to summarize what they have learned in the activity uh, using a web-based uh, web 2.02, like in this case, a Padlet, as you can see on the slide here. And they summarize the activity. They took the picture of the poster and the group, and they use a mind map or flow chart, and they share some uh, relevant videos to summarize what they have learned. So this is one way, one of the activities that we can do uh, to engage students uh, in the learning process. And another group uh, from the same activity, they use another tool to summarize what they have learned. And yet another group used another tool um, to summarize what, uh, from the same activity to summarize in different way using different tools. Like this, you can see, this is a video, this is a text, and so on. So that's only uh, some uh, examples of how we can leverage on the web 2.0 and technology together with uh, just uh, ordinary activity in the classroom to get the students to work together in a group, collaborate, and then uh, summarize what they have learned. So there is no magic actually to engage students, but the effects of engaged students can be magical. So 
the, one of the main points that I would like to um, convey in this presentation is we have to empower our students and let them construct their own knowledge, not just the teacher just transmit the knowledge to students in one way, uh, one way uh, form, but let them to construct their knowledge, develop the skill, learn how to learn. So the approach is to engage the students, we must design the learning process so that the students construct their own knowledge rather than consume content that we give them in the classroom. So how do we actively engage our students? I would like to share some of the uh, approach that we can take. I think very important that we get the whole group in our, in our class to be you know, very uh, energetic and very enthusiastic. So we need to involve them in some activities, just like you saw in the video just now. You know, the group work together, uh, and you know that this will involve the whole of the learner to energize their body, their mind, and their spirit. Just uh, not just sitting there on in on in their chair and and listen from the teachers talking. And we need to get them to participate and collaborate, working in a team. So this will allow the students to do their own work, and the more they stay engaged because they need to talk to their friends and they need to think and they need to discuss and they need to agree on um, the, you know, the solution for the problem given to them. Uh, next, we can get them to work in a group. This is where we can uh, promote the collaboration and get them to communicate with each other. So having students work cooperatively, support their learning and creates community. And the role of the teacher here is to observe and to assess every step in the activity so, so that we can try to find out what students know. And, uh, and from this activity, uh, yeah, we, we try to find out what students know, help them to build confidence and help us keep them in the center of the class. And generate connection means, you know, when they work together in a team, maybe they in the beginning, they, they don't know each other very well, but once they will start to work in a team and group and, and try to solve the problem together, we can see that they start to connect with each other. And always expect more, you know, because if we don't expect more from our students, they probably will be happy just doing the, you know, the routine things or not uh, trying to do more and put more effort in their work. And one aspect of engaging students is actually to get them to leverage on the social aspect of learning. Social and collaborative learning, the new culture of learning needs to leverage social and technical infrastructures in new ways. So my final slide here is um, on, on this one. The world of learning is increasing collaborative, driving changes in the way students learn. So I think that's uh, very briefly some of the approaches and strategies that we can use to engage students in the learning process, to encourage them to work together in a team, to encourage them to collaborate. And the bottom line is by engaging them uh, in the learning process, we can improve and we can enhance the effectiveness of learning. Thank you very much.